Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today we are fulfilling another viewer request, and we are in the southern desert, right beneath the Sentinels, building a Yamatai fort. This build was suggested initially by Molag Bell on my Treasures of Turan Mansion build video, but I also got some inspiration for this build from a suggestion on my Bard's Academy video from Jason Watts, who suggested a Matsumoto-style castle build in the Highlands. Whilst this structure isn't in the Highlands, being able to draw inspiration from the Matsumoto castle was a great reference point whilst building the fort, so thank you both for your ideas. We'll be building, of course, with exclusively Yamatai pieces, though we will be decorating a couple of rooms with pieces from the Crafty Counters mod pack a little bit later on. I've used this mod pack a few times, it's really good, but if you don't have it, then it is very easy to, of course, replace the mod pack items with the regular variants from the actual base game. So, without further ado, let's get started. Firstly, we'll start by laying down our base plate. This isn't a terribly complex base plate, but it will have a 1x1 porch area surrounding the entire build, and we'll continue in that fashion as we build more floors later on. It was a massive, massive pain to get all of the Yamatai foundations facing the correct way, as Yamatai is probably the hardest build piece to place according to the orientation you want, because you can't really see where it's going before you place it, but it's worth it in the end. Next for the walls. Using Yamatai walls, frames and door frames, I'll construct this floor based on the blueprint I showed earlier, separating the floor into rooms accordingly. I'll build the walls two tiles high, using windows fairly liberally to create a feeling of a more spacious build, along with emphasising natural light where I can. Once the walls are then done, I will then place down Yamatai ceilings atop these walls to create the ceiling, leaving a portion open on the right side for the stairs. For the second and third floors, I built the walls up two tiles high again, still trying to utilise windows at wherever possible and making sure each floor has access to the balcony areas. Each floor keeps the 1x1 balcony exclusion zone, meaning that each floor is smaller in terms of actual internal floor space. The second floor is a fair bit smaller than the first, offering two rooms and one larger open plan room, and of course the staircase. And the third floor offers a very thin area that has access to the balcony and allows the roof to be built later on. The second floor has some seating areas on the balcony, and the third floor has a 2x2 section right at the back to compensate for the place left by the smaller roof that we will construct later right at the back middle of the build. I also used the Yamatai awnings and fences to cover and protect the balcony areas, taking inspiration as I mentioned earlier from the Matsumoto castle with its multi-tiered overhanging roof design. On the inside corners I had to use corner awnings to provide as much cover as possible. Unfortunately inverted corner awnings don't exist, so no build piece will really sit here flush. I did try an inverted roof piece, uh, inverted corner that is, but again, it just sat too low and wouldn't sit flush, so this is pretty much the best option for inside corners like this. When the walls were done, it was then time, of course, for the roof. This is a very simple roof, and I'm glad we're doing a simple roof. The last few roofs I've done have been extremely complex, and I'm glad that this is just a simple one. It just involves creating a simple peaked apex roof over the back middle of the build on the second floor, and the roof over the third floor walls is a tiny bit more involved, but not too much. I used flat ceilings to cover the top of the walls on the third floor, allowing me to use sloped sides to build a two-tier roof, with a peaked apex on the higher section, and a flat apex with a Yamatai rooftop piece on the slightly lower section. Next, for the small outside courtyard and drawbridge. I used the Amatai foundations to create a small, simple courtyard area and started work on the drawbridge. This was probably the hardest thing to get right, but eventually I did get it. Drawbridges take up a total length of four tiles and require mounting on a gateway on the edge of foundations, 
so the total space it requires to be placed is 3x4, including of course the gateway. I built a 3 tile walkway from the courtyard to the beach, removing 4 tiles to create a platform on the shore, and a short walkway from the courtyard. I placed the gateway on the 3 tile walkway using fence foundations, with the outer face facing towards the shore. I placed the fence foundations on the platform on the shore facing the gateway, and then with these elements in place I was able to place the drawbridge so that it would reach the gateway just over to the platform, and of course it would properly snap onto the gateway. I then realised the gateway looked a little bit weird just stood there alone, so I built a second gateway one tile behind the first, connected them with walls, and built a flat apex roof with a rooftop piece atop the gateway to make it seem just a little bit more sturdier. I also placed fences around the courtyard and doors in the appropriate places throughout the build. Finally, when the shell of the build was done, it was then time to of course furnish. The platform on the beach is covered by a small shelter, and the entirety of the build is lit with both bracketed standing torches and protected wall torches. Going across the drawbridge, this can be controlled with the lever inside the gateway section, providing a convenient means of defence. The courtyard is guarded by two guards in very appropriate Yamatai dress. The balcony area surrounds the entire build and allows for a total overhanging ceiling and looks pretty good. Entering into the first floor we are greeted by a statue of refreshment in the main room and it provides a nice centrepiece for the room. The first room we're going to look at is on the left which is our craft room. This room uses the crafty counters mod as I mentioned earlier. This is the room where servants will repair, create and tinker with various things around the fort, along with ensuring the guards are properly armed. Next, the second room on the left is the kitchen. Again, this room uses the Crafty Counters mod, and is of course designed to serve the dining room with a large amount of stations designed to be used by the various servants that will prepare food. Next, the dining room. This is a grand room with a large amount of space, and of course it is perfect for guests. It's designed to include a lot of natural light with the windows placed around the top of the room, and includes a gong in the corner so that servants can call down the residents of the home when dinner is prepared. Finally, on the first floor, the office. This is where the head of the household handles various meetings, paperwork, and a variety of other things. This room is designed to be lavishly decorated and feels very spacious. 
It also has a secondary entrance towards the back of the build, which then loops around towards the stairs. Now we're going to head up to the second floor, passing the guards that stand sentinel through the first floor. The second floor is smaller than the first and offers a few different rooms. Heading through the open doorways into the second floor, we'll first look at the master bedroom. This room is designed to be comfortable and cosy, with a focus on natural light through the window near the desk, and a connection to nature with the various planters in the room. Just across the hall is the guest bedroom, which is roomy, it's more lengthy than wide, but has less fancy decorations than the master bedroom. It's designed for more function over form. You can access the balcony on the second floor through the door at the top of the stairs for this floor. Again the balcony surrounds the entire build and on this level gives access to two outdoor seating areas that sit above the craft and the office rooms respectively. These seating areas overlook much of the desert and the surrounding rivers and provide a nice place to sit and relax when a sandstorm isn't ruining your views. Back inside and heading up the stairs to the third floor, this area is pretty much just a formality for access to the third floor balcony. Personally, this is my least favourite part of the build and probably the weakest, as I feel it could be better improved by various means to provide something at least a little bit more interesting to this floor. Nevertheless, it does work well for what the point of the floor is, again providing access to the balcony, but I just think it could be improved. At night, the build is lit very nicely with the torches around the entire build, creating a nice atmosphere in the fort without making it far too bright or insurmountably dark. And there we have it, the Yamatai Fort in the southern desert of the Exiled Lands. Thanks for watching, if you've enjoyed this video leave a like, again a thank you to Molag Bal and Jason Watts for the ideas for this build. If you have anything you'd like to see me build in the future, feel free to leave the comment below with your request. I have a few more builds coming over the next few weeks that are viewer suggestions, so if you have something to fill up that request list, drop it in the comments and I'll get it done. Don't forget to join our Discord through the link in the description and check out the channel whilst you're there. We're very close to 2,000 subscribers and there are plenty more Code and Exiles videos to come, so if you like what you see then subscribe and turn on the notification bell to be the first to see the next video, and of course join us on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Again thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.